I'm Brigitte Hudak, and welcome to Mindful Minute, Operative by Q's new educational video series, where we'll be spending a few minutes discussing some of the hottest topics and trends in operations management. Today, we'll be speaking with Richmond Ambulance Authority's Corey Bernardo on RFID. Corey is a pioneer in applying this new innovation to the first response industry and has been using RFID solutions in his own agency for the past few years. He'll be answering some of your toughest questions about this emerging technology. Welcome, Corey. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you for having me. So, Corey, first question. What advice do you have for someone investigating an RFID solution given your experience with the technology? It is not the perfect solution for every use case scenario. And that's one of those things that you have to go into understanding. You're not going to be able to track everything in the world of it. Um, not or without, without making some sort of sacrifice with it. Um, RFID is a wonderful technology. You just have to work within its means and within its issues or understand its limitations. Um, and once you do, you can start thinking outside the box. So um, if you wanna track your 175 portable radios, you know that you can do so, but you only have a six inch range on the RFID signal. Or if you wanna track, um, an IV pump, you may have to have it custom made. But if you want to track your cardiac monitor, that's easy. There's a tag that's about three, four inches long. You can slap that anywhere on your cardiac monitor and you can track that for 10, 15 feet with no problem from a portable. Um, and it's very, you know, very discreet. And my police don't even know that it's even on there. Um, so that's some of those things that you need to think about when you're doing implementation processes ahead of time thinking about which tags you need, um, what your ultimate goal is, um, and going from there. I want to track every single thing that I have. Um, every asset I have is at least $1,000. Um, I don't want to lose any of those. Not when a $3 tag or a $7 tag that's permanently adhered to that machine can't for the lifespan of the machine um, will save me from losing it. So. Um, just know in there, um, having a whiteboard or a sheet of paper with your ideas of what you're looking at doing, what you're looking at tracking, um, it's gonna help you be more feasible. The other thing, always make sure you have more than what you, um, so if you're trying to buy 67 tags for a cardiac monitor, always buy just a little bit more. Um, they do last pretty long, for a pretty long time, but they can become damaged. Um, they can, for whatever reason, not read correctly. Um, it doesn't happen often, but um, they do fail occasionally. Um, so having a couple on hand on spare will save you from having to either not track an asset or take it out of service if you don't want it to be tracked or if you don't want to not be able to electronically track it. What about the cost of an RFID system? We know that traditionally in the past, it has been a little higher priced than other operations management tools. Did this impact your decision in any way for pursuing an RFID solution? The, the biggest barrier when I was looking into it, I always thought it was cost. Um, when you're thinking any cool new technology, you think there's this massive cost associated with it. Um, and that's really something that a lot of first response agencies are sensitive to. Most of us are trying to figure out how we're going to pay for COVID. Um, most of us are, you know, short staffed, having to pay extensive amounts of overtime. Um, things that we historically have never had to do, at least not in to this degree. I've, uh, I've been in EMS for 13 years now. I've never had, um, you know, staffing be routinely at, you know, 50%. I've never had to pay the amount of overtime that we are now. So I've never had to pay $200,000 a year for gloves. Um, so all of us are always looking for ways to try to save a little bit of additional money um, and we're more sensitive to that. And so when you're talking about adding a new cost um, such as RFID and you see these big numbers or what could be potentially big numbers and you get really focused on that, it's not nearly as expensive as you would ever think. Um, we were able to implement our entire solution for barely even a capital purchase for us. Um, it, it's in a save uh, for us. We were we were able to theoretically decrease an entire FTE, which I actually just are at full time equivalent. Um, 
we actually just transitioned that person to having a new role and actually expanded what our department does by doing so. How effective is RFID for asset tracking? What does that look like when actually put into the field? It fixes a lot of our compliance issues. Um, I, I have 175 portable radios. Um, they're all an absolute nightmare to track beforehand. Um, we would lose typically about one a year before. Um, we would switch to using an RFID knob. The knob isn't exactly the best um, solution out there. It's not even one that um, that Operator IQ actually recommends, but it does work. Um, but what it allows us to do is I can go up to all of these machines and all of our radios, and I can see them every 12 hours, and I know, hey, at least there's this, there's a point where in our system we know someone has seen this device. Um, so, I mean, that's the biggest thing is you do have that, um, you have that ability to go back and see where your equipment is in real time. If something's lost, um, you can actually have a, like a landing point of saying, hey, I know it was here at 11.17 in the morning on you know, February 10th. Um, I can go back and start looking for it there. And it's an electronics timestamp. You can't really fake that for us, so. So Corey, what led you to search for an RFID solution? I was looking for a way to get my employees to have an easier time with their job. Um, we were doing everything manually on paper. Um, and it was hard reading people's handwritings. It was hard of getting uh, the correct compliance with everything. Um, it's also very time and labor intensive. Um, we have anywhere between 800 to 1,000 different supply items in our warehouse at any given time. Um, all done by either the case or each unit. So uh, tracking all that information and all those expiration dates one by one manually was very time consuming, especially since we would go ahead and uh, do cycle count at least twice a week and in multiple locations. Um, we thought of the idea of the RFID was if we went ahead and implemented it, we can go ahead and cut all that time down. Um, and start tracking our supply items, tracking expirations more accurately, as well as tracking uh, assets. Um, losing literally one radio would cost us $4,400 and um, not having a verifiable way of tracking that information every single day was essentially a hindrance for us. Um, so one day um, we actually calculated up how many hours we were losing due to um, lost man hours of doing cycle counts and how many hours we were spending tracking missing equipment um, because you know you're using paper logs to try to figure out where items were um, and it came up to being somewhere close to three to four thousand dollars a week in money that we were losing just tracking man hours of trying to figure out where things were in our system. How can RFID help the first response industry and what benefit can it bring to operations managers? It simplifies a lot of our roles, especially when it comes to things like your assets. Um, being able to track the $30,000 cardiac monitor or $40,000 stretcher. Um, being able to have an electronic verified tag saying that it is at this location on this time frame, that time frame is invaluable to us. Um, I can track about two to $3 million of assets at any given time. And I know I have a dashboard built in my system. I can see where all of my stuff is in near real time. Um, and then you can adapt to your own needs. So if you if you want real time on a vehicle, you could have that with RFID. Or if you just want it to be a passive shift check um, to help your employees speed up what they're doing um, each shift, so you know that everything in their truck is uh, verified for compliance reasons. So let's say, for example, your state requires certain things on the truck you can have an electronic verified stamp saying that those items are there. Um, so ease of mind, uh, compliance issues, all the way to making sure that your equipment isn't misplaced, um, it's honestly invaluable for us.